Hello, hello. All the glory goes to Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. All the glory goes to Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. And it's been a while, but I'm going to be reading you a chapter from Read With Me Bible. And Lord Jesus Christ is coming so very, very soon. Lord Jesus Christ is coming so very, very soon. I'm using this as an edge, you know, for educational purposes. To help, you know, people, you know, understand, um, especially for those that are in their beginning of their faith. So, if you remember where we left off, we left off at, you know, when the beginning plagues, and now we're on the four more, the next four more plagues, which is four more plagues, which you can find in Exodus chapter 9, verse 12, in the King James Version of the Bible. And for those who want even more detail, you can check out the book of Jasher, which is one of the books that were removed from the Bible, and check that out, and it has very detailed explanation as well. So, take this all up to the Lord in prayer and ask Him for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and turn to the Lord. So, the beginning, it says here, <clears throat> The Lord said to Moses, Toss ashes into the air. The ashes will turn into fine dust. Then boils will break out on the people and animals. But Pharaoh would not listen. Also, just to let you know, this only happened to the Egyptians not to the Israelites. They didn't get the boils. They didn't break out on them, nor on their animals. And when you think of the boils, think of a monkey POX that's happening to those who have taken the mark of the beast. And I truly believe that C da, 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 V Magic Ocean Potion is the mark of the beast. Take it all up to the Lord and ask him for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I am just a messenger. All right. Ah, oh, look at that picture. Hmm. That does that look like good weather? Then the Lord sent thunder and hail. Hail beat down everything that was growing. It tore the leaves off the trees. Pharaoh sent for Moses. I have sinned, he said. Pray to the Lord. We've had enough hail. Moses prayed. The thunder and hail stopped. But Pharaoh sinned again. He would not let the Bible go. So the Israelites, God wants to get the Israelites, you know, back to the promised land. And they're living in Egypt right now. And, yeah, things aren't going too good for them in Egypt. The Pharaoh is horrible. He's, he's persecuting them. He's having their, their firstborn sons thrown in the river. All kinds of horrible, horrific things are going on for the Israelites. And so, God uses Moses to, you know, to be the one who, you know, who speaks to Pharaoh and tells him, you know, you yeah, gotta let us go, and then, you know, and Pharaoh's not listening. He doesn't want to listen. He's, his heart is as hard and cold as a block of ice on Pluto. That's how cold and hard his heart was. And he ain't listening. And he see the hail and the thunder and everything was falling apart. And, and you know, he just like, you know, I'll let you go. And he lied. Lied like a rug. And so Moses listened to him. He asked God. Did God, you know, put an end to the plague. And then Pharaoh, you know, turned around. Stabbed Moses in the back. And said, no, I'm not letting you people go. You stay here. You, you can't go nowhere. And guess what? Today, we have a lot of thunderstorms and a lot of hail. You can do some research just on uh, YouTube here, and you can find all kinds of videos about all the hailstorms and, and thunderstorms and hurricanes, all kinds of things going on. Let's continue. The Lord made the, a wind blow. The wind brought up locusts. The locusts covered the land and ate up everything that was left after the hail. Pharaoh sent for Moses. He said, <clears throat> Pray to the Lord to take this plague away. Moses prayed. The Lord changed the wind, and the wind blew the locusts into the Red Sea. But the Pharaoh would not let the people go. Look at him. He's got locusts there, and does he look like a happy pharaoh? No, that, that drawing illustration looks like he's, like, miserable. And there's Moses. Just a little background here. When the locusts did come, 
the uh, the Egyptians kind of um, rejoiced over them because they had lost so many crops from the hailstorms and the thunderstorms and everything else. And the, even though the locusts did eat up their crops, they started eating the locusts. And locusts are another name for grasshoppers. And people do eat grasshoppers even to this day. People take grasshoppers, or also known as crickets, and ground them up to make cricket meal or turn them into flour for their baking. They may make flour out of crickets. You can, it's up between you and God if you want to, you know, eat crickets. I remember watching a video of some guy eating crickets and um, they were, you know, different flavored crickets. They were covered in like powder flavoring on top of dried up dead crickets. And his favorite was a sea salt and vinegar. But I wouldn't eat them. And no, I wouldn't eat them. Yeah. No, not my type of thing. And then when uh, the Lord um, changed the wind and blew them away, some of the Egyptians were kind of upset about that. But it's all said in the book of Jasher. You can turn to the book of Jasher about that if you want to. But yeah, I like to call the crickets and the, um, the locusts swarming leaf gobblers. That's from Land Before Time. I don't promote that in any way, shape, or form, but I do remember that episode. Exactly, it was a movie. At the beginning of the movie, um, the uh, the characters were fighting over uh, some you know some green food you know they were herbivore dinosaur things, and the next thing you know they you know Grandpa Longneck finds food for him, and then the swarming leaf poplars come in, and then they ate everything up, just like what they did in Egypt, with little crops that the Egyptians had left after the, all the all the first all the other plagues and the hailstorms and everything. But little they had left for themselves and for their animals, the swarming leaf gobblers, known as locusts, came in there and feast upon it, and there was not a single leaf behind. And it happened, uh, it's happening nowadays. There's been locust swarms of locusts in different, in different places on the earth. But you can do your research about that. All right. Moses reached out his hand toward the sky. Darkness covered Egypt for three days. Three days of darkness. No one could see anyone else. Pharaoh sent for Moses. He said, Go worship the Lord. Just leave your flocks and herds behind. Moses says, Our animals must go with us. But Pharaoh would not let the people go. The Lord said to Moses, I will bring one more plague on Pharaoh. After that, he will let you go. There's the Pharaoh. He's like, He's yelling and he's angry and there's Moses. And when the three days of darkness happened, there was no darkness for, for the Israelites. They had light in their homes. They were fine. But for the Egyptians, it was completely dark. And it's going to be the same thing because the three days of darkness is going to come back. And it's going to be a dark, a thick, thick darkness dark, where you can't see your hand in front of your face. You can't see anything. It's going to be very thick. And for those that are true children of God, there will be light in their homes. The electricity will be running. Everything will be fine for the true children of God. But for those that are not children of God, that have not taken the mark, uh, they're going to have some hard times coming ahead of them. I will tell you that much. They're going to be in complete darkness. And it's going to be hard. And for those who have taken the mark, um... They're going to be like zombies. And you don't trust them. Tell you this word. Do not trust them. And if you do, and you're a true child of, of God, and you've lived with someone who, who's marked, go to the Lord in prayer and ask Him for guidance, wisdom, knowledge, understanding what to do. God will protect you. He'll protect His true children. And if you do live in a house with, you know, just, just you and, and those that are, are true children of God, don't open the door. Don't let anyone in. When they come banging on your door, the, you know, dirtbag enemy can pretend to be your grandma or your aunt or your uncle or some guy named Simba. You know what I mean? You don't open your door. Don't let them in and, and put blinders on your windows. Block out your windows if, if you feel led to, to do that. Or just blow, you know, or just pull down your Venetian blinds or whatever you have or curtains. Just don't look out there and have nothing to do with it. Because during the three days of darkness, God has revealed this to me, is also going to be when a false alien invasion thing is going to happen. A.K.A. fallen angels, Nephilim, 
dirt bags, demons, all kinds of things are going to be out loose, running about, doing their own thing. They're going to be all over the place. You don't want to have anything to do with them. Now, it goes by where you're at. Because the three days of darkness is going to start in the middle of the day from what God has led me to know. So it'll start in like, you know, the middle of the day, noon, 12 noon. And so you may be at work. So you have to turn to the Lord when it happens and to find a place in your where you're working at to shelter in place. It's going to be a lot harder, though, if you're trapped in your car, well, especially going by what type of car you're in. If you're in like one of those tiny little smart cars or something, Things are going to be kind of hard, but um, maybe God will lead you to some place you can go outside that car. I don't know. It's between you and God. I don't know your walk, so you have to turn to the God, to Lord God Almighty during it. Don't trust in your own flesh and your, and your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of yourself. Trust in God 100%, because it's a good thing to humble yourself before the Lord. He will take care of you. You don't want to be Nimrod and shake your fist again at him. I think you know all the answers. You don't. You really don't. You don't even... You don't even know how your lungs work. God's controlling every breath you have. He's keeping you alive. Remember that. So it'll be a tough time, but just hunker down and uh, trust in the Lord. I would say gather up a little bit of supplies to last three days at least. Of course, after the three days... There's going to be all kinds of tough times ahead. That's when the uh, Antichrist is going to reveal himself. And everything's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. And you've got to trust in the Lord. You have to trust in the Lord. You can't trust in your own understanding. Trust in God Almighty, Lord Jesus Christ, first and foremost, not in your own understanding. But you'll get through it. You will get through it. The Israelites got through the three days of darkness. They put their faith in the God, in Lord God Almighty, and he took care of them. And they got through it. And if they can get through it, you can get through it too. So trust in the Lord with all your heart and soul. And with Pharaoh, after going through the three days of darkness, his heart was still so hardened and so cold and so icy and so black and so dead that even he, he still would not let those people go after going through three days of darkness, trapped in another darkness for three days. He wanted them to leave their herds and animals behind. Why? Because he wanted them. He wanted to take their herds and animals from them. Because most of the Egyptians' animals had suffered terribly, and a lot of them died. And so, yeah, you know, the Israelites have some real nice beef cattle over there, some nice sheep, you know, this or that, horses. They won for themselves. And they knew that if they weren't there to protect them, they would take them. And that's why he's like, oh, I'll let you go, but you can't take your animals with you. And, and Moses is like, we need our animals, you know, with us. They have to also go with us. And uh, some of them have to be, you know, martyrs for the Lord. You know, so you have to be sacrificed for the Lord. And so, yeah, he's not letting them go. Interesting, isn't it? But you got to turn to the Lord. Trust him with all your heart, heart and soul. And, and have faith. Have a mustard seed of faith. And if you don't have faith, you can ask God for faith. Ask Him. In prayer and supplication, ask Him for faith. Ask Him for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Turn to Him. Do not turn to your own understanding. Times are going to get tougher, and they're going to get harder. But that's when you trust in the Lord more and more. You can grow in faith from glory to glory to faith to faith. And I'll be back as the Lord leads.